Hey folks, here's our uh, answer key for Unit 3 Progress Check FRQ. Um, so we got a situation here where looks like it's a wedding invitation or something like that, RSVP. So you got a Boolean for RSVP, an integer that means beef, chicken, pasta, or fish, a string for option one, a string for option two. So the first one's pretty easy. Write a code segment that prints attending if RSVP is true and not attending otherwise. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, so we're going to say um, if RSVP, it's already a boolean, so you don't need to uh, you don't need to say if it equals equals true. So if RSVP, we're going to system dot out dot print line. We're going to say attending. In our if, and then our else can be um, not attending. So system dot out dot print line not attending. Okay, so there's our if else. So that's they're just checking if you know how to write if else's. So let's check the second part. So there's part A. Part B is write the code segment that prints the food item associated with selection. Um, so if you had selection as three, then um, the segment should print pasta. Okay, so that sounds like some else ifs, right? We got our else if situation going on here. Um, so jumping back here for part B, that was part A. Part B is going to be um, if selection equals equals one, we're going to do something else if selection equals equals two, we're going to do something else if equals equals three, we're going to do a third something, and then else, we're going to do a fourth something. So, all right, so let's go back and check what those somethings are. Um, so it looks like t -t -t one is beef, two is chicken, three is pasta, four is fish. And we're just, um, what are we doing? We're printing? Did it say print? Oh yes, print. So imagine on every one of these I wrote system dot out dot print line. Right? Oops, let's jump back to here. Imagine I did system dot out dot print line. Right? And then and this isn't focused, hold on. Um so yeah, there we go. That's prettier. Okay, so the first time was beef. The second one is chicken. Think, yeah, chicken. The third one is pasta. And the last one, if for all other choices, it's fish. Okay, so that's not bad, right? Um, all right, cool. That was pretty easy. Just they checked if you know if else's, we check if you know else ifs. Um, and then C is okay, if RSVP is true, then the code segment should store in option one a string associated with the person's attendance and food choice. Okay, all right, so this one's a little trickier because. You're storing this in option one. Um, so on this one, you're going to have the words, thanks for attending. You will be served if RSVP is true. So it's going to start off an awful lot like our other one. Um, so I already know, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take up a lot more room. Um, so on this one, we're going to start off with an if RSVP. 
Um, you're going to say, I think uh, you want to start off with option one starting this thing, because right now they just have option one stored as a string. Since they all have um, thanks for attending, I'm going to make it start off with option one as um, thanks for attending. And then period, uh, you will be served, and then a blank. Okay, so if I do that as option one, then depending on what they pick, I can just add that in. So inside of this if, we're going to have a nested if, um, else if situation. So this is checking your nesting. So, so selection equals equals one. So this looks just like our other one. You're going to, instead of printing though, you're going to add the word beef to the back of this thing. So you're going to say um, option one plus equals, and then I'm going to add on the word beef. I'm also going to put a space there because I ended this one right here. Okay, and a period too. So we're going to add the word beef and a period. So <clears throat> we'll do else if selection equals equals two. So in this problem, <clears throat> really the difference is whether or not you're printing or whether we're adding to a string that already exists. Oops, option one plus equals, and then I think, what was that, chicken, I think, for two, space chicken, period. And then another else if, wish we didn't have to write this much, but it's good to get used to writing code. So option one plus equals, and then this was pasta, period. And lastly, with the else, we're going to have um, fish. Okay, and then that was all under the if. It's a crazy nested if. So now I'm going to end my parenthesis or my braces for that. And then I'm going to put else. And I think it just is going to change option one to um, sorry you can't make it. Okay, <clears throat> so remember that option one was inside if RFS VP was true. I started with thanks for attending. So if that's not true, it'll jump down to here and say, sorry, you can't make it, um, oops, semicolon, and then you're done. <clears throat> so that was a little trickier. We're basically storing things in a string. All right, last part. And this one's an easy one. Um, it says, write code segment that'll print true if strings option one and option two contain the same values. It'll print false otherwise. So they're both strings. So it's checking, do you know, to use dot equals instead of equals equals. So the, the slow way of doing this is if option one dot equals option two, then, oops, in the end parentheses, then system dot out dot print line, you're going to print uh, true, and you'd say else. And you would print false. Um, but there's an even quicker way if you want to be more efficient. You could just system dot out dot print line the option one dot equals option two. And that would actually print a true or false already. You don't have to 
it already is true if it gets here, so you could just print the result of that thing. Anyway, that's where we'll stop for now. I'll come back with question two. I don't know if you knew that, but there is a second question here.